charge each other, just like two bulls charge. Lord Balarama always wants to give service to Krishna. When there was some problem, uh, one of Krishna's sons had been arrested and taken prisoner. Uh, Lord Balarama said, I will go. I will go and talk to the Kuravas and settle the dispute with them. Lord Balarama went along with Uddhava and he went there and he met with the Kuravas and at first they began to insult Krishna. And they, they were speaking insulting words about Lord Krishna. They were hoping Lord Balarama would come to their side. But Lord Balarama became angry with them. And then he threatened them. He took his plow and began to drag the Hastinapur palace into the, into the Yamuna. And then only they realized their mistake and they brought Krishna's son along with the, the young girl, Lakshmana, he wanted to marry, the daughter of Dhritarashtra. So it was all achieved by Lord Balarama. Lord Balarama wants to give service to Krishna. In the same way, Lord Nityananda also serves Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's a wonderful pastime describing how Lord Nityananda appeared here in Mayapur Dham. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was telling the devotees that he had a dream. And he said, in the dream, he saw a chariot. It was decorated with a flag marked with a, a tall palm tree which had fruits. And he said that on the, the person on that chariot was very large, he had a very large body. And he was, he was he, he, when in, in the dream Lord Chaitanya said, I requested him, who are you? And he said, I am your brother and tomorrow we will meet. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was telling all the devotees that very soon a great personality is going to come here in Mayapur. So that same day, Lord Chaitanya requested the devotees, Srivas and Haridas, that you go everywhere around Mayapur and find this person and bring him. Now, Srivas and Haridas are both Mahabhagavat devotees and they were certainly very qualified to go and find Lord Nityananda. But they searched for nine hours but still they were unable to locate that person. In the end they came back and told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that we went everywhere, we went to every home, we went to all the Vaishnavas, we went to the Grihastas and even the sannyasis. we went to where they were staying, we even went to the non-devotees, but we could not find anyone like you described. This is instructive because it shows us that the pastimes of Lord Nityananda are very confidential and they cannot be easily understood. Therefore, many persons have made offenses against Lord Nityananda and they have not recognized his factual position. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted his devotees not to fall into that trap. He wanted them all to understand exactly what was the position and the identity of Lord Nityananda. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told all the devotees, I will take you to him. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then led all the devotees to the home of Nandan Acharya. Nandan Acharya is also a Mahabhagavat devotee. Actually his home is very special. It's the next door neighbor to our place here in Mayapur. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also sometimes would go and hide in the home of Nandan Acharya. And even Advaita Acharya, when he first came from Shantipur, he was also hiding in Nandan Acharya's home. So the, all three lords, they like to hide in Nandan Acharya's home. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bought, brought all the devotees to the home of Nandan Acharya. And there 
they entered into his home and they saw this wonderful personality, effulgent, with tears in his eyes and chanting the holy names of Krishna. They were all surprised to see this very special personality. They had not been able to locate him. Srivas and Haridas had looked everywhere, but they had, could not find him. But he was there in the home of Nandanacharya. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came before Lord Nityananda and Mahaprabhu stood in front of Lord Nityananda and Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya, they looked in great ecstasy on each other. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had already begun the Sankirtan movement prior to the appearance of Lord Nityananda here in Mayapur. But without Lord Nityananda, he was not feeling that the Sankirtan movement could be just as he wanted it. He knew he must have Lord Nityananda here for the Sankirtan movement to actually spread everywhere. So therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very happy and Lord Nityananda was also extremely ecstatic to see the form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted everyone to know the position of Lord Nityananda. He requested Srivas Thakur, recite some verses about the beauty of Krishna. And Srivas Thakur began to speak from Srimad Bhagavatam. There's a wonderful verse describing Lord Krishna, how he is decorated with a peacock feathered ornament on his head and how there's uh, Karnikara flowers on his ear and he has a Vijayanti garland and he's uh, covered in a cloth which is like golden and he's entering the forest as the greatest dancer. At the same time, he's filling his flute with the nectar from his lips and all the cowherd boys are singing his glories. So Srivas Thakur recited this beautiful verse and when Lord Nityananda heard this verse, then his ecstatic love for Krishna was awakened. And he, first of all, rose up and began to jump and dance. He, then tears began to flow from his eyes, soaking his entire body. He was filled with ecstatic love. Sometimes when he would jump, he would fall on the ground so heavily that it seemed like his bones would all be broken. All the devotees who had come there with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when they saw Lord Nityananda's display of ecstatic love, then they were overwhelmed. They could understand his very special, very exalted position. Lord Nityananda is none different from Lord Balaram. And he had come to join Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, and together they performed this, they, they inaugurated the Sankirtan movement. Initially, their pastimes were in the home of Srivas Thakur. Just as Krishna and Balaram performed their pastimes in the home of Nanda Maharaj, not like Krishna appeared in Mathura, but his pastimes were more in the home of Nanda Maharaj. In the same way, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda, their pastimes were mainly in the home of Srivas Thakur. And it was in the home of Srivas Thakur, the nocturnal kirtans were begun. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted the message of Krishna to be given to everyone. Therefore he ordered Lord Nityananda that you go everywhere and give this message. Ask everyone to chant the names of Krishna. And Lord Nityananda was very successful in his preaching. He made many, fall, not only Jagai and Madai into devotees, there were many other fallen souls who also took shelter of Lord Nityananda's lotus feet. 
there is a particular pastime narrated how on one occasion again a gang of thieves had the intention to rob all Lord Nityananda's party. Lord Nityananda traveled with a group of devotees. There were 12 of his associates who actually are described as being all cowherd boys in Krishna Lila. And these 12 cowherd boys, they all became associates of Lord Nityananda. And together they traveled performing Sankirtan and preaching the glories of the Holy Name. So this gang of thieves were thinking, we will rob this party. Let's, Lord Nityananda was decorated with many fine ornaments and jewels. They thought, we can steal them all. So they thought, we'll just wait for night. When it becomes dark, they'll go to sleep, we'll enter into their party and steal everything. But the thieves, while they were waiting, they were overcome by tiredness. They all fell asleep. And they woke up the next morning and thought, oh, the night has already passed. We've missed our opportunity. We will come again. We will come another time. So they left and they came back after some time. But when they came back the second time, they were shocked to see the party was guarded. And the guards were just gigantic people with huge physical forms and decorated with kunti mal around their neck and tilak on their bodies. They were very fearful. So the, when the, the Dakoids saw these people, they thought, oh, we can never rob this party. Look, they've got these guards. They're ferocious. They're, they're, they will kill us. We better not do anything now. We'll come another time. So they went away and after some time they came back for the third time. This time they were ready that we're going to rob them. We're going to get the jewels today. We're going to go in there and steal everything, all their valuables. But just as they were entering, suddenly big black clouds appeared and thunder and lightning began to uh, be heard everywhere and seen everywhere. And then there was torrential rain. Not only rain, it became blocks of ice, ice stones falling from the sky. And they were big like cricket balls, you know, and they were bombasting their bod the bodies of these thieves. The thieves were suffering so much, they could not see where they were going. It all, everywhere became dark. They fell into the place where, you know, they have these big pits where they put their garbage. And many of the thieves fell into that hole, breaking their bones. And this way they were all suffering so much. The leader of the Dakoites, he was considering all of this. And he considered everything which would ha had happened and he thought, this is no chance. There's, there must be some higher in purpose behind this. This Lord Nityananda, he must be some very great divine personality. I have to go and surrender to him. So that thief, the head of the, the leader of the Dakoites, he came and he surrendered himself at the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda and became his devotee. And Lord Nityananda told him, now you go and preach to the other thieves and make them also devotees. And in this way, many thieves, they all became devotees, they all became followers of Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda had very important part also in allowing us to get the Bhakti Shastras. There are two books which are very vital for the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One is the Chaitanya Bhagwat and the other is the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And Lord Nityananda played an important role in both of these books. First of all, the Chaitanya Bhagwat, written by Vrindavan Das Thakur, who is described to be the Vyasa of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. So, Vrindavan Das Thakur, he was, describes himself as the last disciple of Lord Nityananda. He was able to be accepted as a disciple of Lord Nityananda. Vrindavan Das Thakur was the son of a great devotee 
called Narayani. His mother was Narayani. And Narayani, as a young girl, when she was only four years old, she got the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. She was able to take prasadam from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested Narayani to display some ecstasy in love of Krishna. And Narayani began to display all symptoms of ecstatic love, crying and shedding tears and rolling on the ground. Uh, so this lady Narayani grew up to become the mother of a very wonderful son who grew up to be Vrindavan Das Thakur. And he has given us the Chaitanya Bhagwat, which describes all the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Lord Nityananda is also involved in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Because the Chaitanya Charitamrita, written by Krishna Das Kaviraj, and Krishna Das Kaviraj describes to us in his book how Lord Nityananda appeared to him. He describes that on one occasion, a great devotee of Lord Nityananda named Mini Ketana Ramdas came to the home of Krishna Das Kaviraj and his brother. They were having some festival in their home and this uh, Mini Ketana Ramdas came there along with his uh, party but they were not very well received because it appears that the priest was not favorable to Lord Nityananda. And also the brother of Krishna Das had faith in Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but only a glimmer of faith in Lord Nityananda. And so it, it describes that when Mini Ketana Ramdas was leaving there, there was some conflict, some bad words given by the brother of Krishna Das Kaviraj. He would criticize Lord Nityananda. And Mini Ketana Ramdas was very upset. In his anger, he broke his flute and he left that place in anger. Krishna Das Kaviraj told his brother that you are a foolish person. It would be better to be an atheist and not believe in either Chaitanya or Nityananda than to be a hypocrite and b accept one and not accept the other. And Krishna Das Kaviraj describes, from that day on, his brother fell down. So that night, Krishna Das Kaviraj, in his dream, was blessed with the appearance of Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda appeared along with all of his associates. And Lord Nityananda instructed Krishna Das Kaviraj that, go to Vrindavan, for there you will attain everything. Lord Nityananda placed his lotus feet on the head of Krishna Das in his dream and then disappeared. So when Krishna Das Kaviraj woke up from that dream, he, without hesitating, he left that home and went to Vrindavan. And there in Vrindavan, he got the shelter of Rupa and Raghunath and he was able to hear all the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he was able to give us the Chaitanya Charitamrita which Srila Prabhupada kindly gave us his purports to. So you can see how merciful is Lord Nityananda that by his work we have both Chaitanya Bhagavad and Chaitanya Charitamrita. The mercy of Lord Nityananda is unlimited. Right? He is giving that mercy to all of us. We have to follow in his footsteps by also preaching in that mood of Lord Nityananda. Shooting the rhino, going for the jagai and mud high. Right? And let everyone know the true glories of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Lord Nityananda 
to stay in Bengal. He would go every year to Rath Yatra. But uh, on one particular occasion, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested Lord Nityananda that you don't need to come here, you can stay in Bengal and preach. But Lord Nityananda could disobey that order. He, this is the position of Lord Nityananda that he can disobey sometimes even the instruction given to him by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because he serves Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sometimes as guru, sometimes as friend, and sometimes as servant in different rasas. Therefore, we see Lord Nityananda also that he breaks the danda of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taken sannyas, he gave his danda to Lord Nityananda to carry. But Lord Nityananda broke that danda and threw it away. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after some time, he requested, where's my danda? Lord Nityananda said, oh, you don't remember? We were having kirtan and you jumped up and you landed on the danda and it broke. <laughs> you, you caused it to snap. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not happy to hear all of this. Of course, Lord Nityananda earlier, he had come to the home of Srivas Pandit. He had a danda and he also broke that. Because Lord Nityananda is not belonging to any of the varnas or ashrams. He is avadut. Right? N he is avadut. And he considers these external symbols to be superfluous. So for someone who is Paramahamsa, you don't need to carry these things like dandas. So Lord Nityananda felt it's not necessary for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to have a danda. There's another pastime where there's some joking words between Lord Nityananda and Advaita Acharya. Because Advaita Acharya, he is the head of the Brahman community. He's something, that, so there's some smarter Brahmana influence there. And Maha, Lord Nidyananda, he is Avadut. So after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, they all came to Shantipur and a big feast was prepared. Mahaprabhu was complaining that, oh, this is too much, I cannot eat all of these things. But Lord Nityananda began to speak joking words and say, you know, I've been fasting for three days. This is, this, this is only a morsel of what I can eat. This will not satisfy my hunger. And Advaita Acharya requested him that, I'm a poor Brahmana, kindly accept whatever I offer to you. And Lord, Lord Nityananda said, you have invited me to your home. It's your duty to feed me. Advaita Acharya said, you are a reject Paramahamsa. <laughs> the word in Bengali is Brasta Avadut. Brasta Avadut. And reject Paramahamsa. Because Avadut means you're on the Paramahamsa stage. So, he's, by Lord, uh, Advaita Acharya was calling Lord Nityananda as a rejected Paramahamsa. And in this way, actually, he's glorifying Lord Nityananda, that you are not actually of these ashrams. You don't belong to these ashrams. You're higher than all of that. You are a Paramahamsa. You're above all these things. There's always some conflict there between the smarter Brahmanas and the Vaishnavas. We know even in astrology and astronomy, astronomy, there's some different opinions. You know, we have our day for Janmashtami one day, they have it the other day. You know that kind of thing. And there are different opinions between these smarters and between the Vaishnavas. And so it was all, but between Advaita Acharya and Lord Nityananda, it was all joking words. It was not real. People of course, ordinary people, they're confused by it. They do not understand what is actually the intention. 
But without being guided by the purports of pure devotees, then we also could never understand these dealings between the Lord and his devotees. So today is also the appearance day of Lord Varaha. We will just speak briefly about Lord Varaha that uh, described in the Srimad Bhagavatam how uh, Swayambhuvamanu and his wife Shatarupa were requested by Lord Brahma to proc proc produce procreation but they requested Lord Brahma that you please note that the earth planet has fallen into the bottom of the Garbhadak ocean if you could pick up the earth planet, then it will be easier for us to do what you want. So Lord Brahma then began to contemplate how to bring up the earth from the bottom of the universe. And at that time, from the nostril of Lord Brahma, Lord Varaha appeared. And Lord Varaha then grew into a gigantic form. And in his gigantic form, Lord Varaha then dove into the bottom of the universe and detected the smell of the earth planet and picked it up on his tusk from the bottom of the universe. Now, some Acharyas, the Acharyas tell us that actually there are two Varahas. One is the white Varaha and one is red Varaha. And the white Varaha is performing the task of picking up the earth from the bottom of the universe. And the red Varaha is the one which fights with Haranyaksha. So they appear in different Manus. The Sweta Varaha, the white Varaha appears in the time of Swayambhuva Manu. And the red Varaha is in the time of Chakshusha Manu. But for the sake of convenience, the two incarnations are combined into one in the Srimad Bhagavatam and it's described like that, that Lord Varaha goes into the bottom of the Garbhadak ocean, picks up the planet, but at that time he's attacked by, he's uh, spoken to by Haranyaksha. Because Haranyaksha had this very powerful physical body. So he is looking everywhere that where is a suitable opponent, somebody I can fight, who can give me a good battle. And he saw Lord Varaha picking up the earth planet and he addresses him, him as, Oh, you amphibious beast. Right? <laughs> Not very nice way to address the Lord. But Lord Varaha is ready to meet the challenge from Haranyaksha. And of course they have a great battle, a great fight. And after some time, Lord Varaha, simply by the slap of his hand, he is able to knock over Haranyaksha and take out the life from Haranyaksha. So the worship of Lord Varaha, in the, in Hundreds of years ago, it was very popular, particularly in South India. We can see Varahadev temples, quite common. And even there was one kingdom in South India, the currency which they used was called Varahas. It was so popular. Nowadays, we're more attracted to Lord Nishringadev, but previously it was Lord Varaha was, the worship of Lord Varaha was very fashionable. One of the artists, when they first had to paint these pictures, it was a challenge. Uh, Jadarani Mataji, who was Prabhupada's first lady disciple and one of the artists, she wrote to Prabhupada saying that, you know, we, Varaha, a boar, boars are not very attractive. How, how can I present this form of the Lord? How, how to present it? But Prabhupada told her that the Lord is always attractive in whatever form he takes. Even he comes as a boar, but still you should make him attractive. 
So do your best. <laughs> so in this way uh, Prabhupada was guiding the artists how to present Lord Varaha. So it's unusual that today we have both the appearance of Varaha and Lord Nityananda on the same day. Because it's Varaha Dwadasi and Nityananda Triodasi. So I don't know how they can have both appearing because usually we'd say Varaha Dwadasi. Yesterday should have been maybe the appearance of Lord Varaha. But anyway, we're celebrating both of them today. So both of these events are combined. Uh, any questions? Prabhu. What is the special feature of Nanda? Well, he's a Mahabhagwa devotee, right? Just that, that he attracts the other great devotee because he's a Mahabhagwa devotee. So he's attracting these other great personalities also to his home. No other significance than that. That they come for association. And in their, when they go to Nanda Acharya's home, they will pass the whole night speaking topics of Krishna. They feel very comfortable, just like you know somebody is a devotee, you go to their home, you know you, you can have some good Krishna kata in their home. So in the same way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Nityananda, Advaita Acharya, they also went to Nanda Acharya's home. They also enjoyed to pass the time with him. Hmm? Oh, I don't know who, is, who he is in Krishna Leela. Anybody know? Who is Nanda Nacharya in Krishna Leela? Are you sure about that? No? We can look it up. Hmm, Prabhu? Keep engaged in Krishna's service. Don't stop serving. Just like Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, he was constantly serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without any deviation, without any gaps. Just keep active service. Act actively engaged in the service of the Lord. If we're always busy in Krishna's service, then Maya cannot touch you. So you just have to keep yourself engaged. Don't stop, don't deviate. Krishna Surya Sam Maya Haya Andaka. If there's sunlight, there can be no darkness. And if we're in Krishna consciousness, if we're thinking how to distribute Krishna to others, then Maya cannot touch you. Wherever you go, if you're just thinking about giving Krishna, just like Lord Nityananda, he's always wanting to give the message of Lord Chaitanya, to give Krishna consciousness to others. So if we're always thinking about trying to give Krishna to others, then there's, you cannot fall, you won't fall down. If you're always busy in Krishna's service. So wherever you go, you just have to have that consciousness that I am the servant of Krishna. Servant means you do service. You've got to keep yourself engaged. We're always thinking how to preach, how to distribute books, worship Krishna. There's so much service to be done. So many things, so many activities. We have so many rounds to chant. We have so many books to read. There's so many fallen souls out there. They need mercy. We cannot think, I have nothing to do. So much to be done. 
So, if we are always thinking to be busy, to be engaged in the service of Krishna, then Maya cannot touch. Prabhu? Mini Ketana Ramdas and Abhiram Thakur are the, no, not the same. Abhiram Das Thakur, he is one of the twelve Gopals, but not the same as Mini Ketana Ramdas. No, two different persons. Why is it better to be an atheist than, and to reject both Chaitanya and Nityananda than to accept one and reject the other? Because there's, it's, there's a, the offense. You know, if you're just an atheist, you, 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 didn't, you didn't do any offense. You're just, you're just an atheist, you know. You didn't do, there, there's, you're, okay, you're, you don't believe. But if you accept one and reject the other, you accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and reject Lord Nityananda, that's like worshipping the feet of a brahmana and hitting him on the head. It's very bad. It's very nasty, very offensive behavior. Therefore it's stated like this in Chaitanya Charitamrita that Krishna Das Kaviraj said like that to his brother, better you be an atheist. Because if you're an atheist, then okay, he's just an atheist. So. But he's not offensive. Atheists are just interested in sense gratification. Okay, you're a sense gratifier. But there, there's no, there's, he hasn't committed an offense against someone. He's actually, he's actually being offensive against Lord Nityananda. So that's Vaishnava, that's very serious, very bad. Better he just rejects both and be an atheist. Yes. Why did Nityananda break the danda of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was trying to be an ideal sannyas? Well, that was why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was angry with him, that I'm trying to be an ideal sannyas. But Lord Nityananda, he wants Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he wants everyone to know that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doesn't need a danda, that he's the Supreme Lord. He doesn't need a and, and he, he, he doesn't need these symbols. And why he, another argument is he broke it into three. He broke the danda into three, showing he's actually a tridandi sannyasi, not a mayavadi sannyasi, not an ekadandi sannyasi. He broke it into three pieces. So he's tridandi. Yes? Dangishan, you have taken. They're considered what? Oh, pastimes of Lord Nityananda. Why are they considered confidential? Yeah, because confidential because people cannot understand them unless they're properly educated and qualified to understand the pastimes of Lord Nityananda. Very deep, very special. Lord Nityananda, we said, is avaduta. He does not belong to any of the ashrams. Therefore, sometimes he behaves like a sannyasi, sometimes he's a brahmachari, sometimes he's a grihasta, and sometimes he's just a madman. There are many descriptions in the Chaitanya Bhagwat where he appears to be almost like a madman. And when sometimes when he stayed in the home of Srivastakur, he was in the mood of a young child. 
because he was remembering his Vrindavan pastimes. As Balarama, he was a young child in Vrindavan and he was living in the home of Srivas Thakur like he was a young child. So ordinary people, conditioned souls, hearing these pastimes will be very confused. They will wonder, what has happened? What, you know, what kind of person is He's mad. Therefore, without being properly qualified, you cannot understand these pastimes of Lord Nityananda. Therefore, they are confidential. Okay, we have to stop now. We should go for darshan. Thank you very much. Sri Nityananda Prabhu ki, Varaha Dwadasi ki, Gaur Premanande.